Introduced in 2004 at the North American International Auto Show, the S197 developed by Ford's chief engineer Hao Tai Tang and the exterior designer Sig Ramirez. Manufactured in Flat Rock, Michigan in the Flat Rock assembly plant. From 05 to 2010, the base model 4 liter V6 had 210 horsepower and GT was wielding the 3 valve version of the 4.6 liter V8 with 300 horsepower. In 2010, the GT's engine had a revision to 315 horsepower. Then in 2011, the base model had an updated aluminum block 3.7 liter V6 thrown in that weighed less than the previous engine and it was making 305 horsepower, which is more power than the previous 4.6 liter GT from the previous years. But in the same year, the GT got blessed with a 5 liter Coyote engine that produced 412 horsepower and in 2012, the GT gained an extra 8 ponies making the GT have 420 horsepower. Basically, the Ford Mustang is really a force to be reckoned, but how reliable is it? Can it compete to the reliability of the Camaro I spoke about last week? Well, today I'm going to talk about the common issues of the Ford Mustang that you should know about before you make that purchase or just to better educate yourself about your own ride. Let's get started. Well, I want to go ahead and start with the issues on the S197 from 2005 through 2010. First off, the 05 model for both the base and GT has had the most complaints since it was the first year the car came off the line. They're just bound to be issues, so I would simply just avoid that year. In the 3.7 liter V6, the thermostat housing is made up of plastic and the housing itself fails at around 8,000 miles. A good metal replacement will fix that issue and it should not be very hard to replace. Also in the V6s, they have timing chains both in the front and the back of the engine. By about 150,000 miles, they may develop noise from the tensioners going out and the plastic guides breaking. And with that, it can jump the engine's timing sequence and cause it to run rough or simply just not turn over. You will need to remove the engine to fix those issues. And that alone is a huge deal breaker for me. In the 4.6 liter V8, the spark plugs pop out or get stuck in the head. This is due to their 12 millimeter two-piece configuration. A spark plug extractor will get the job done. If it's a case where you mess up the threads, you may need to reset the holes. It can be done at home, but I would recommend a professional if you aren't comfortable doing the job because you don't want to mess up that head. In the 07 and up models, they went to a 14 millimeter plug, which resolved that issue. The TR3650 five-speed transmission starts to become hard to shift and may start causing a little bit of noise. Adding a friction modifier and a fluid change will make it easier to shift and seems to fix that issue. On the passenger side floor, water leaks from the water drain underneath the cowl. All you have to do is clean the drain plug and you're good to go. I would not advise removing the plug permanently because Larger items could get stuck down there and they would be harder to remove. There is no trunk release in the car from 2005 to 2009. I have no idea what Ford was thinking, but you could install a kit to have one. Only other way that you can open up the trunk within those years is to literally go from the back seats and pull the emergency release. In the 2010 model, Ford finally decided to add one, but in an awkward place they decided to put it in the center of the dash. So if you have a convertible, you cannot safely place your stuff in the trunk. In the V6 Auto Trans for these years, it has hard shifts when you put it into reverse. The fix seems to be replacing the solenoid part number 9L2Z7G391A and replacing the trans fluid. Owners reported the car shifted like a new car after they changed out that part. And that's the bulk of the issues for those years. Now I'm going to talk about the issues that all models have from 05 to 2014. Then afterwards, I'll focus on problems only through 2010 to 2014 models have. The seat brackets that attach to the floorboard rust out in all S197 models. You can remove the seat, sand down the rust, apply rust converter paint, and finally repaint them to fix the issue. 
corrosion on the front edge of the aluminum hood and buying another aluminum hood will be a pretty penny. I would just buy a fiberglass hood or repair the US myself. It may not be pretty, but no one will see my jank job until I raise my hood. Water leaks around the tail lights. Fresh gaskets will take care of that issue. Car runs rough due to a dirty or bad map sensor with code P061B. Ensure the clamps on the intake are on tight and with zero tears. If all that's good, clean the map sensor and you will just have to replace the map sensor. Or the throttle body could be dirty with code P2103. You can try to clean it out and there are many videos explaining how to do this and it's a pretty easy job to do on both parts. Code P0456 is an EVAP code. Most common replacement is the gas cap to fix the issue. Most likely the gasket is going bad. The door handles just go flappy. You could either replace them with nice aftermarket ones or some owners did a DIY fix with a heat gun. Leather on the seat start to wear from seat belts. You can buy a 2015 to 2018 seat guide to prevent any further damage and make it easier to grab the seat belt. Worn outer tie rods causing a squeaking noise while turning. All you need to do is jack up the car, unscrew and loosen the tie rod, remove the cotter pin, then remove the bolt, and finally smack it with a hammer. You will need an alignment after you do this and doing the replacement can be done at home with a bit of elbow grease. If you hear rattling noises from underneath your car while driving and it isn't consistent, a clogged converter may be your issue. Replacing the exhaust and the converters can be a bit pricey, so I feel bad for whoever lives in an emission restricted area like California. Now let's talk about Mustangs from 2010 to 2014. The 5.0 Coyote engine has a first gen and second gen. The second gen Coyote came in the 2013 to 2014 models and received an increase in horsepower like I mentioned and an improved oil system. Not really an issue, just something to mention. With the 5.0s, there seems to be a ticking problem. This typically happens after an oil change and for its service bulletin, 7718 states that it's not detrimental to the engine. However, there have been many cases with engine failures that Ford has recognized in most cases and some cases Ford completely ignored. People say that there seems to be a bad batch of 5.0s that were sent out and that could be the issue. However, there does not seem to be a true answer to this issue. Some claim using a thicker oil will fix the ticking issue and sure, it may, but that will result in ultimately other engine components failing in the long term use due to the oil just being thicker and not reaching the entire engine as quickly as the manufacturer expects it to do. And those engine failures might be the reason there are reports of engine failure while the engine is ticking. In the 6-speed MT82 transmission, it has a hard notchy shift. The Ford Bulletin says to replace the transfer with lighter oil and that just seems like a Walmart brand band-aid to fix that issue. People have talked about adding AMS oil and a friction modifier that ultimately did fix the issue. The same transmission has issues with the clutch and the third gear locking out during spirited driving. A new clutch seems to fix that issue. And finally, on the same transmission, the clutch fork breaks prematurely and should have been broken and been fixed by warranty already. So I'll be sure to ask about that. In the 4.0 V6 models, there are only a few issues. The water pump seems to go out commonly, which is an easy replacement. And the alternator seems to fill around 80,000 miles, which is also an easy fix and will probably take a lot shorter time. All right, so what's my ending verdict? There are a lot of issues spanning the entire lifetime of the S197 Mustang. In general, all the engines are very reliable and will last a long time with proper maintenance unless you get the 5.0 tick, but owners have reported driving high mileage with the tick just fine. Just don't replace the oil with thicker oil. That seems to be the final consensus. The 4.6 liters are known to last 300,000 miles and the V6s should easily last 200,000 miles if you take care of the timing chain issue in the 3.7 liter. But back to my initial question. Is it more reliable than the 5th gen Camaro from 2010 to 2015? 
I'd say that the Camaro is a bit more reliable with less issues that just pop up randomly. Check out that video if you're curious to see the matchup. Anyways, I hope this helped you out in your purchase. And if you are a Mustang lover and you're willing to work with these issues, have at it. If this helped you out, smash that like button and subscribe if you're wanting to learn more about cars. This is Chris Automotivate. Always appreciate and respect each other. I will see you next time.